Hello and welcome to my assignment video uh, for the Go Green assignment. Um, my VPC details are as follows. I'm going to have two VPCs, um, both in the same region, US West, where the um, headquarters of Go Green is, um, one for test purposes and one for production purposes. They'll each have six subnets and two availability zones. Um, the subnets will be as follows. Um, two for web tier, um, uh, two for the app tier, and two for the database tier. Uh, they will be um, distributed equally amongst the two availability so uh, zones, and will all be private. Um, the security groups uh, are as follows. I will allow access uh, on port 443 uh, for my load balancer that's going to be balancing from the, um, uh, from the internet. Um, uh, because 443 is uh, the uh, is usually used for SSL connections, which um, are a lot safer. Um, uh, this is also why I'm using port 3306 um, for the database tier, because that's what the port is synonymous with MySQL. Um, uh, they will be as follows: the uh, source for the uh, load balancer is going to come from the wider internet. And the uh, that's then going to feed to the web tier, which is then going to feed to the app tier, which is then going to feed to the database tier. Um, I would also like to be using uh, the uh, the VPC routing tables um, to route traffic to help route traffic. Um, AWS Marketplace for all the security that it can provide. Um, network access control lists um, to provide firewall protection uh, for the subnets. And AWS WAF because um, to protect against web-based uh, attackers like um, uh, MySQL injections, etc. Um, uh, the encryption options I have chosen for uh, encrypting data at rest are making use of the key management system for managing keys, um, enable S3 encryption so that the the database will be encrypted. Um, uh, the storage will be encrypted, and also to use the RDS encryption for database security. Um, for encryption uh, for data in transit, that's why I was using SSL um, or TLS um, uh, for the ports beforehand, um, because they are a lot safer for transmitting data. It is all encrypted. Um, in terms of instance details, I'm going to be using uh, uh, Amazon Linux because that's the sim most similar to the operating system they're already using. Um, in terms of the reason I've gone for a larger size uh, for both the web and app tier, um, it's because the uh, memory strain that they were talking about in the brief um, would be dealt with by this like you'd have um it would be brought down from i think it was 75 percent uh down to about the 50 percent range um this is the same reason for the uh, for the app layer um since the cpu and memory usage is currently 90 percent um having a large um having a larger size will will deal with this and the reason this the uh, the database is is db or five is or, or three because is because um it's chosen to match the app layer um, and so the RPO options um, to allow for the four hour uh, RPO that they're looking for, um, I would ensure the servers are stateless and keep snapshots of them every four hours in case there's any need for recovery. Um, and uh, in terms of document storage, uh, they ask for a three month period in which it is most likely to be accessed. I would then put that I would put that into an S3 instance um, to adhere to this. Um, so it would be held in there and then after the three month period uh, is up, it would be moved into deeper storage in Amazon Glacier. And then that at that time it'll be kept for the five years and when the five years are up, um, it'll be deleted. Uh, that would be using a life uh, life cycle policy for that kind of thing. Um, in terms of web tier requirements, um, uh, to solve the problem with uh, flexibility and handling any high peak in performance, all you need is scalability. So it's going to be um, auto scaling. Um, 
in terms of web tier. Uh, and then the problem they're having where they want to keep it between uh, 300 Mbps and 750 Mbps, um, I would use CloudWatch to um, monitor this and then uh, scale accordingly. Uh, so when it reaches, uh, when they start reaching 750, uh, spawn more instances, and when they drop below, uh, when they start dropping below uh, 300, have a have a timeout window uh, of about 10 to 15 minutes, and then uh, delete it also. Um, in terms of the errors, CloudWatch can also do that and keep a uh, an alarm that can trigger um, whenever uh, the errors reach over 100. Uh, per minute, uh, and then it'll send an email to the application administrators. Um, in terms of app tier uh, requirements, um, the app tier, uh, just as before with the web tier, will scale with auto scaling. Um, and in terms of the auto overall memory and CPU utilization, not, uh, to not go above eighty percent at seventy five percent, it would be the same situation again where the Cloud watches um, uh, keeping an eye on it. Uh, internet access. Uh, I would uh, for this question the internet access required uh, for uh, patching uh, and updates without exposing the servers. I'd set up a NAT gateway uh, for the VPC and allow the root table to you know root the relevant traffic there so they can update it without the servers becoming exposed. Um, in terms of the database tier. Um, the RDS, uh, I was thinking of using using um, RDS with provisioned IOPS uh, with uh, elastic uh, block storage instances. This would allow up to, I think it was 30,000 IOPS. Um, in terms of having a high availability, this is um, why I will have uh, the databases in the, across the two availability zones. Because you have a clone um, of the current database that's synchronously, uh, synchronously replaced uh, and is running in a secondary availability zone. So um, there's higher availability for that. Um, and no change to the database schema can be made at this time, but that's not a problem. You can use MySQL 5.6.22 when creating the RDBS, which should allow for a seamless transition. Um, any additional services? I chose to also use uh, Amazon IAM. Uh, I chose to use this because it allows access for um, AWS services to the cloud team because they only wanted the cloud team to be able to access it and also to restrict um, those who can access the S3 instances. And this is my architecture diagram. Thank you for listening and this has been my presentation. Goodbye.